so we've learned how to space things using CSS or with tables. Now we want to try and make our web pages look a little bit nicer. So um, I'm going to teach you how to create rollover images for buttons. So instead of having text as our links, we can have something like this, uh, where this is two images, um, and when you move your mouse over it, it changes to the other image. So in this case, a skateboard. Um, our other way, uh, the other thing we're going to learn is how to make buttons using CSS. So uh, these are CSS buttons. If you roll over, you can see that they have a bit of a fade in and fade out effect. Um, and so we'll learn both of these options next. Okay, so to start with, we're going to use CSS rules to create buttons. So uh, what we're going to do is go down to page properties, and we're going to assign some properties to our links using CSS, as you can see here. So we're going to change the font size to 18, um, and we're going to change the link colors all to black. So link color being what it looks like when you just see it, and that's it there, hash 0000. zero, 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 zero. Um, and if we want to highlight that, press control C. Uh, we're going to change all these settings. So when you roll over, it's going to be black. When you've, um, when it's active, it's black. And when you've been there before, it's black. And we're going to turn off underlining um, completely. So never underline and hit apply. Um, and you'll see it's made a whole bunch of rules. So we got A, which is sort of like all our font settings. And we got the link, we got the visited, etc., etc. What we're going to mainly play with is a here. So underneath A, we're going to press enter once and we're going to add some padding. So we're going to write padding to the left and we're going to write I don't know, 15 px, 15 pixels. Um, that'll spread them out a little bit um, and we're going to copy that and paste it below and we're going to change it from left to right and then we're going to paste that as well and we're going to change that from left to top and we're going to paste that again and we're going to make that bottom. Um, and now if we hit refresh, everything's been spread out just a little bit. Um, what we're going to do now is go over here to our CSS designer panel. Um, and we're going to move up to A. Um, and say show set, which will show us everything that we've done so far. Um, so we've made padding all around the outside. What we want to do though is go to border. should be down here and we're going to give it a bit of a border radius so uh, we'll go with five all around and we want to have a background color as well so we're going to choose a background color and we'll just go with like a sort of teal color that'll do as so you can see our buttons are forming and you can see the code happening here so we've got a background color background radius, etc. What you can do is under here on the background color, if you were to delete full colon, um, it pops up with the color picker and you can choose the colors with names. Um, so if we move down, I don't know, why don't we go with uh, deep sky blue? Um, and that'll work as well. So you can either do it with these named colors or you can use the hash and then choose the color. Um, hit refresh and obviously it'll change our colors for us. What we want to do now is make sure that it is spread out into the middle. So we're going to create a div. So we're going to highlight this stuff, insert div, and it's going to say wrap around area because we've, it automatically detects that. Say OK. Um, and now what we're going to do with our div is we're going to uh, center everything in our div. Um, so all of our buttons stay in the middle. All right, at the moment, our buttons just remain the same color. What we want to do is when we move our mouse over them, um, they will transition to a different color. It'll look a little bit nicer. So scroll up to your background color under A, and we're going to choose that and press Control C to copy. And we're going to scroll down to Hover, press Enter, and paste it there. Now we're going to change Deep Sky Blue to something else. So press Delete, full colon, and then choose a different color. I'm going to go with, uh, what have we got here? cornflower blue sure we'll go with that um, and what we also want to do is instead of the colors just changing instantly we want it to transition so go up to a again and press enter underneath here and write the word transition here it is there and we want it to apply to everything so we're going to write all um, and then we want it to go for about half a second of transition so write 0.5 s and we want it to happen to be a linear transition so write the word linear and close it off with that semicolon and if we hit re refresh save and if we open up the images.html page as we move our mouse over you can see it transition 
between the two colors we've chosen. It takes about one second to change, or half a second, sorry. And there we go, we have some interactive links between our pages. All right, so that's how you make um, some CSS buttons. We could tweak this a little bit if we wanted. So maybe we don't like the narrowness of our button, so we'll make our padding a little bit bigger on the left side and the right side. And now our buttons are, I guess, more button-like. They're more of a rectangle. And if we preview that, you can see that they look more like buttons. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's CSS rules and how to make buttons using those. Next up, I'm going to show you how to create rollover buttons instead of buttons used with CSS. So go back to your home page, um, and we're going to do this with Photoshop and Paint, so you know how to do it in both. So to start off with, we go to Paint. Uh, generally, you want to make your buttons about 200 wide. So we're going to go to Resize, uh, Pixels, and we're going to go uncheck this box here. And we're going to make the height 50, and we're going to make the width 200. Press OK. And so you got sort of like a button size right there that looks about the right size. So color one is black, color two, uh, we might make this um, a different color. So maybe so our buttons can be blue. So you just change that. Um, and we're going to draw a box like this. And we're going to make the size a bit bigger, maybe 14. And we're going to write home because it's our home button. So highlight that, make it bold. Um, now the thing about paint is it doesn't have the ability to center. So you're going to have to do it manually. So I'm going to make this size a little bit larger after I've highlighted it um, and make sure you set it on opaque so that the color that you chose is there. Um, I might even make it a bit lighter, that works. Um, and then the way paint works is you just click away um, and it places it and now it's permanently placed. You can't edit that again. So um, I'm going to use the paint bucket tool to fill in the background using right click because that's my second color. Um, and now if I draw a box around my text like this, I'm going to move that so it's in the center. So there we go. So we've got ourselves a home button. So we're going to go File, Save As, and choose PNG. Make sure you choose your My Site folder, and we're going to make another folder in here, and we're going to call it Buttons. And inside Buttons, we're going to have Home 1. BTN, if you want to put that in there as well, so you know it's a home button. So it's home one because it's going to be one of two. So that's the home button. Press save. Um, and now what we're going to do is make the rollover. So when our mouse goes over it, it changes. So you can do anything you like. I am going to just put a smiley face. So using my black color here, I'm going to zoom in a little using this magnifier and I'm going to draw a smiley face. There we go. So when my mouse moves over, this smiley face will appear. Um, probably not the most professional looking thing. Uh, maybe making an underline pop up might be a little bit of a better idea. We can do that on the next button. Um, so you can zoom back out again. Um, and then we go File, Save As, PNG. And instead of Home Button 1, we're going to call this one Home Button 2. And hit Save. Um, so now, if we go back to Dreamweaver, um, where it says Home, we're going to highlight this. And we're going to say insert HTML, and then we're going to choose rollover image, which is down here. Um, and this is where we can tell it what images we want. So we're going to give it a name, we're going to call it home button. And we're going to get original image, which is what it looks like when you're not touching it with your mouse. And we're going to browse, go to buttons, and it's going to be home one. Um, and you could browse again, but I like to just highlight this, press control C paste and then just change the number because we know it's home button 2. Preload means it loads the image before the page loads. So it happens with it and then when clicked go to URL is your link. So we're going to browse for that and we're going to choose home because this is our home button. And press OK. And you'll notice it's it's uh, put the home button in. We're going to delete this because we don't need the text anymore. I mean your table spacing has been messed up a little bit. Don't stress about that when we put in some other images it'll fix it up. Um, so press save, go to my site and open up home. And you'll notice here our home button has a rollover image happening on it. So that's an easy way to make a rollover button using paint. Um, you notice it doesn't really have any transitions but you know, oh well. 
Um, you can do that if you were to use GIFs or GIFs, depending on how you want to say it, um, as your rollover buttons, but uh, no stress. Um, now I'm going to show you how to do it with Photoshop. So if you have Photoshop open, go to File, New, uh, where it says Width, we're going to change this to 200 and Height to 50. Press Create. And you'll see it looks just like we saw in Paint. So zoom in a little bit so we get a little bit more precision. So using Alt and Scroll on your mouse. Um, we're going to go to the Text Tool. And we're going to draw a box. And you notice Photoshop has all the additional things like these guidelines to help you make it right in the middle. And we're going to write the word About. Because this is going to be our About button. Um, it looks pixelated because we're zoomed in. So if we uh, zoomed out it wouldn't look like that. But double click on it. And then we're going to increase our font size something a little bit larger possibly not that large that's better so there's our about button um, and we'll change the background color so maybe we want that same blue we had before so if we click on color 2 from paint and say edit colors um, we can see its color here so it's shades, so it's 153 red, 217 green, and 234 blue. So if we wanted, we could match that exact color um, like this, choosing our reds and greens and blues like we saw before. Um, so I'll just show you that real quick. There we go, there's our color. Press OK, um, and now if we Use the Paint Fill tool here on the background. As you can see on our layering here, um, we've got the same color. So that looks about right. Instead of um, drawing a smiley face, what we're going to do is underline it. So use this Shape tool here, um, and we're going to make our color black, and then just draw a box. So. Um, what we need to do firstly is turn off our underline because it's going to be the about image rollover image number one. So file, save as, and change it from PSD to PNG. Go to buttons. I'm going to call this one about one, BTN, and press save, um, and press OK. And then just make your underline appear again by clicking the little I option, um, and then say file, save as again PNG and we're going to call this one about 2 BTN and I clearly have not matched the color but oh well don't tell anyone save okay um, and now I go back to Dreamweaver do the exact same thing for about and there we go so we got two buttons one made with paint one made with Photoshop um, and if we save it and test it Go to our home page, and um, we can see our two rollover buttons. Okay, so that's how you can make interactive buttons using CSS um, and uh, rollover images. Thanks for watching.